A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was a scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down to the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls. He has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Blessed be God, who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. says the Lord, whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw, draw him and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, Except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. 
Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Evangelization. We are hearing an awful lot of that word lately. Obviously, it's important. And certainly that sense of evangelization comes forth from, as we've been reading through the Acts of the Apostles here in this wonderful encounter between Philip, one of the seven deacons of the church, who appears sent by the angel to this Ethiopian. We're not exactly sure what the status of the Ethiopian is, whether he was a Gentile or, a, or just a, a Jew, part, part Jew, who was just trying to figure things out. There's lots of scriptural debate on that, but nonetheless, one thing we notice, though, is, and of course we have to remember that Luke is the author of the Acts of the Apostles, but this story has pretty much the same framework as in Luke's gospel, the resurrection day encounter of Jesus with the two men going to Emmaus. The structure is pretty much the same. They're traveling, Ethiopian traveling. They're discussing amongst themselves the scriptures, trying to figure it all out, and Ethiopians doing the same. And then suddenly a stranger appears in their midst and accompanies them along the way. And then that stranger opens their minds to the scriptures. And then we have a sacramental encounter with the two going to Emmaus. Our Lord broke bread, Eucharist, and their eyes were opened. And in this case, fill up the deacon, they come to water, and the Ethiopian is baptized. And then they rejoice in great glory as both Jesus disappears and Philip disappears as well. So obviously it's a story, both of those stories are very dear to the hearts of those early Christians. They were also catechetical or teaching tools on either the Eucharist or on baptism as well. But going back to evangelization, remember the words of Jesus on Ascension Day. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them. Teach them all things that I've told you to observe. And that was not a mission or a command just to those apostles or disciples. That's really a command for all of us. And at the heart of all of this is the encounter with Christ. It begins by dwelling on his word, the scriptures, pondering, maybe trying to figure it out as to how it applies to my life. But in the midst of that, we have to firmly believe in our faith that the risen Christ will be there with us. We will encounter him and he will open our minds. And that's why we also need to continue to pray to that Holy Spirit that Jesus sends upon us, because it is that Holy Spirit that dwells within us that assists us in opening our minds to the great love and the mercy of God. So as we encounter our Lord in this liturgy today, may our hearts also burn with joy, excitement, may we too rejoice like this Ethiopian as well as the two who are 
returning back to Jerusalem after their encounter with the Lord on that resurrection day. May Jesus continue to breathe his spirit upon us, and may we too be proclaimers of the good news to those all around us. Calling on our merciful God, let us offer our prayers and petitions on behalf of those in need throughout the world. For all who are called to serve the church, that their efforts to share the good news of the risen Lord will bear much fruit, let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, that they will govern justly and work to uphold the dignity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have received the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist during this Easter season, that they may be filled with the joy of the risen Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For the victims of violence or war, that they may find reason to hope in a better life, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died, especially for Patricia Hiltz, the intention of our Mass this morning, for the priests of our diocese who died on this day, Father Andrew Subert, Father Alphonse Roder, and Father Arnold Van Dyke, for all who have lost loved ones recently, and for all our loved ones. May they find rest and know the peace of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, grant these prayers and all that we hold in the silence of our hearts in the name of Jesus, your Son, amen. <clears throat> 